Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 11th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. The .io top-level domain is often used for some of the more tech-savvy kind of web pages. But nevertheless, apparently a few days ago, the entire .io domain was ripe for a takeover, given that the registrar responsible for .io did not renew some domain names that are used for name servers for this top-level domain. Matthew Bryant, who has made a name for himself in finding these kind of uh, issues, realized that ns-a1.io, ns-a2 through a3.io were available to be registered and uh, these domains are used for .io name servers. So he went ahead and actually verified that his systems did receive queries for .io. .io domains. He did not answer them, so all he did essentially was verify whether or not the vulnerability was real. Kind of uh, to add to this problem, he tried to notify the .io registrar, but turned out that the address, the contact email address that was published within Whois was not valid. Now, based on his write-up, it looks like it took about a day for the .io folks to realize what happened and his registrations, of course, were promptly revoked by his registrar. They essentially just told him there was an error that these domains were available for registrations and they have it fixed now. As I mentioned, this isn't the first time that Matthew has run into this issue with major domains. In the past, he has found a couple of country level domains and such that were affected by this. I think .io is probably the largest such domain that he has had this issue with for now. Of course, this happens very often with corporate domains. So make sure you have control over your name server records and the domains associated with your name servers. And Malwarebytes came out with its quarterly Malware report. Now, I don't usually cover every single report that the vendor comes up with. The reason I sort of want to mention it here because it's very different from what Virus Test reported recently. Virus Test essentially stated that the entire ransomware part was a little bit uh, overhyped and really only a very small percentage, if I remember correctly, they said 3% of malware infections were actually ransomware. Now, Malwarebytes takes a very different view of it. They're saying that 70% of all exploits and phishing attacks are distributing ransomware. Now, the difference here, I think, is that virus test looks at actual successful infections, while Malwarebytes is really looking at infection attempts. So you could say that there are a lot of ransomware attacks, but only few of them appear to be successful. We really have to hold these two reports next to each other and study them a little bit more careful to see if this sort of explains the difference. Now, as far as ransomware goes, according to Malwarebytes, the Kerber ransomware family is 90% of all ransomware infections. Again, there may be a little bit of selection bias in that this is an older family that's, of course, very well recognized by antivirus tools like uh, Malwarebytes. Now, the two reports, however, do agree as far as malware targeting the Mac goes in that there is a steady increase in such malware. And OpenBSD will make it yet harder to take advantage of any vulnerabilities that may exist in its kernel. The latest feature being added here goes by the acronym of CARL, short for Kernel Address Randomized Link. And what this really means is that on each boot, the address layout of the kernel is randomized. Without this feature, of course, if you have multiple systems 
systems running the same kernel versions, well, the kernel is always laid out exactly the same way and that hacker who can identify one piece of the kernel will be able to then deduct all the addresses of all the other functions within the kernel. This new feature will make every kernel unique and as a result, uh, writing exploits will be even more difficult. Interesting feature, not 100% sure how many current attacks it will prevent. But of course, uh, this further re-emphasizes the reputation of OpenBSD to be an operating system that's really built around security. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.